For the last four decades, David Ledbetter has coached many of the top golfers in the world and has changed the landscape for the golfer-coach relationship. His teachings over these years have helped players produce some superb results. However, today his name brings up some strong feelings for many golf fans. Greetings y'all and happy 2021. It's your knock Peter Mata and I know I talked a bit about David Ledbetter in my Ty Tryon video, but I wanted to explore his story more and provide more of a balanced view as to why he's so polarizing. So without further ado, let's get into the truth about David Ledbetter. Born in Sussex, England, David actually grew up and played junior golf in Zimbabwe. After having little success as a pro golfer on the European and South African tours, David wanted to remain close to the game, so he became the pro apprentice at Royal Herrera Golf Club. There, he cultivated his interest in the techniques, mechanics, and psychology of golf, and soon thereafter, he jumped into the golf coach profession. David first became prominent in the 1980s when he began working with a young Sir Nick Faldo. While Nick had won the 1983 Order of Merit on the European Tour, he was frustrated by his inability to finish majors and break his Nick Foldo nickname bestowed upon him by the British press. While it took a few years of retooling, together, David and Nick transformed Nick's old school 1970s swing to a more modern swing that could quote, win the open. And as they say, the rest is history. Nick went on to win six majors after the swing change and rose to the number one player in the game. This obviously gave David a lot of notoriety for help making this transformation possible. So along the way in the late 80s and early 90s, he picked up some big name students. From Ernie Els to Nick Price to Ian Baker Finch, he built a premier stable of players, all of whom won a major under his guidance. As the 90s moved along, David's profile and celebrity grew. He wrote books, created instruction videos, developed all sorts of innovative training aids, and began building his first Ledbetter Academy in Florida. Not to mention he was raising a family of his own with his LPGA Tour wife Kelly Fuchs. And together they built their family of five as well as that Ledbetter brand that we all know. Along with growth and profile and family, David's stable of premier players continued to grow into the 2000s. Charles Howell III, Trevor Immelman, Ty Tryon, Michelle Wee, Suzanne Pedersen, and others, David seemingly focused more on developing young talent over retooling established stars. While this set of players produced mixed results under David's guidance, and we'll get into this in a bit, David still continued to grow his profile. He was ranked year in and year out by Golf Digest as one of the top coaches. He offered a hefty price of $3,500 for a three hour personal lesson, and he also continued to expand his academies all around the world. As this past decade rolled around, the Ledbetter brand has been made bigger than ever. In terms of players, he's helped the likes of Lydia Ko, Daniel Kang, and Ben Ahn earlier in their careers, and he most recently teamed up with Patrick Reed. He's also published more books, including one about his A-Swing, which is his latest approach to the golf swing that he's developed. In 2017, surprisingly for the first time, he was announced as the PGA of America's Teacher of the Year. In addition, his academy has turned into an absolute empire. After teaming up with Golf Zon to help expand and make golf more accessible all around the world, there are now 43 Lead Bear Academies across the four continents of North America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. In terms of what and who they teach at these academies, it ranges widely. So there's obviously still the junior golf slash college prep part of it, which most probably know of. This part of the academy basically prepares high school kids to be a college and pro golfer. There are now also things like Lead Bear Kids, which teaches kids from ages 3 to 12 all sorts of life skills through golf. And also, there's Ledbetter University, which helps the development of golf instructors. So all in all, David has seemingly been widely successful in his ventures over these decades. Which makes it very interesting as to why golf fans have such strong feelings towards him. So what is it then? What exactly is the truth about David Ledbetter? Well, I'm going to break it down to a few truths. The first couple are pretty positive, straightforward, and based on the things I just said about his life and career background. Number one, David Ledbetter is a great businessman. And number two, David Ledbetter is a pioneer for golf coaches. Whether you like him or not, David has turned the simple act of instructing golf into a multi-million dollar business. Like I listed earlier, David dipped his hands into a lot of different content. 
all of it before there was a golf channel or YouTube. He was the one golf coach who first started writing his own instruction books, creating VHS videos, developing training aids, getting his own endorsement deals, along with coaching his players and building academies. All that started with him, and to his credit, he's grown it worldwide. So I have to take my hats off to him on that. That takes great communication and people skills, business savvy, and not to mention golf expertise. So it definitely wasn't all just blind luck. I'd also like to point out, as I said in the intro, that a successful relationship with Nick Faldo really revolutionized the landscape for the golfer coach relationship. While it wasn't unheard of to have a golf coach back then, it was David and Nick who took it a step further and made it a full-time thing, where David was by Nick's side for guidance on a constant basis. Obviously now you see that with just about every player. They have their coach behind them videoing their swing and giving them constant feedback. Well, David and Nick essentially made that exception into the rule, which is something that can't be understated. So those are a couple positive truths that I have to say about David Ledbetter. Now I suppose enough of the praise, let's get into the other truths that y'all will probably find juicier. Number three, David Ledbetter's quote unquote phenom students underachieved because of his approach to teaching them. And number four, to that extent, David Ledbetter's teachings is not for every golfer. So let's get into this. What exactly is David Ledbetter's supposed philosophy and how does it affect his students? What's interesting is reading what he and others say about his philosophy because it's a stark contrast between thoughts. On one side, you have people, usually golf fans, that say he's a method teacher who only focuses on mechanics and is unwilling to adapt to a player's swing. Also along those lines, he gets criticized for ruining players' natural swing. Or as they like to say, those players get lead poisoning. And on the other side, you generally have pros, other coaches, and David himself who say, no way. David is not a system or method teacher. He doesn't teach the same basic moves to every golfer. He believes that there's a right swing for each student based on their body type and natural rhythm. So obviously this makes for a very interesting debate. Who exactly is right? Well, I suppose the cop-out thing to say is that they both are, at least in my opinion. I stand by what I said in my Tai Triumph video and what I said earlier about David Lebert's teachings. I have no doubt that when David works with a golfer that he will teach that player based on their swing and his relationship with them. And yes, there are certain core items that he does focus on for each of his students and you can pause to see some of them here. But I don't think we can deny that there's been a pattern from his students since I'll say the 2000s and on. As I said earlier around that time, David started to focus more on developing young talents over retooling established stars. The likes of Charles Howe III, Ty Tryon, Michelle Wee, Trevor Emmelman, Lydia Ko, Danielle Kang, Ben Ahn, etc. All of which young phenom types who have beautiful swings and are great ball strikers. All of which who also aren't necessarily known for their short game and have had slumps after early success and hype in their careers. Some of this definitely has to do with David Ledbetter's approach to teaching them. What seems to happen is that David teaches them the quote unquote flawless mechanics. And honestly, it truly is good. Each of these players have their swings and techniques exactly where you would want it. I mean, it's absolutely aesthetically pleasing, and they produce results. But then usually, once these players leave the academy, so to speak, and go on their own, they all sort of struggle to adjust. That's because David's teachings makes them focus too much on perfecting the mechanics instead of focusing on scoring and using their natural abilities to adjust. Which is interesting because David's main thing with his students is to make them self-reliant. He's previously said, quote, My whole key with all these players is to make sure they understand their own swing. Make sure they're self-reliant. I would say, look, I'm trying to make you your own best coach. So you could say for these players, he failed to do that. I think because these players were so young and really their only experience was with David Ledbetter early on, they never really got that chance to develop for themselves that natural instinct to score, adjust, and really just let loose and play golf. 
Now look, some of these players have ride the ship and have been able to move on with their careers successfully. But to this point, all these players have underachieved for the talent that they have. Which is why people get upset and criticize David. They see these young talents stop producing and become overly mechanical and mental. And sure, a big part of it is the player's fault too, but David's teaching approach certainly contributed to their development that way. And to get back to another point, this is why David Ledbetter's teachings is not meant for every golfer. Of course, you could say that for just about every coach. And also, I'm not really talking about the stuff you see on YouTube that are made for like the weekend golfer. There is actually some good stuff there that can be helpful. But what I am referring to is that I think David's teachings are ultimately more effective on established stars rather than on young talents. And I think he should focus more on that instead of trying to build up talents from the ground up. Because after all, that's how he became so notable in the first place. The Nick Faldos, Nick Prices, and Ernie Elsa of the world already had their own instincts and David had the expertise to spot where they could improve. This is why I predict he'll probably do well with Patrick Reed, because Patrick has already developed his own instincts and David should be able to see where improvements can be made. To sum it all up though, there's no doubt that David Ledbetter has made a mark on the game. A lot of people, rightfully so, give Butch Harmon credit for being the Phil Jackson of golf coaches. But while I've said what I've said about David's faults, I can recognize that he's contributed greatly to golf and should be put right up there with Butch as one of the greatest golf coaches of all time. He's helped introduce the game to many and has helped countless of not only pros but also amateurs improve their game. So at the end of the day, these are just my observations about David. I wish him well and hope y'all found this video interesting. It is a bit different from my other videos and I plan to continue to mix it up to start this year. But yeah, definitely let me know your thoughts on it and whether or not you hold these truths to be self-evident about David Ledbetter. Anyways, thanks again for watching y'all, and as always, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Your words mean something to me.